I'm going to go into the scripture. Um, I'm going to read from 1 John 2, um, verses 15 through 17. Say amen when you have it. I'm going to read from the King James first. Um, and I'm going to read from New King James after that. So the word says, Love not the word, though, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that, do, that doeth the will of God abide forever. Amen. We're going to read the New King James Version. Um, just so that the young people can understand a little more. Um, I pray that the young people with their families, with their mothers and their um, fathers, and they're watching and tuning in. So verse 15 through 16, 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, Father God, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. I'm going to ask the young people to follow me. I'm going to ask everyone to follow me um, and go through this real quick, pass it as fast as possible. Um, in this scripture, the word world um, means in the Greek, orderly arrangement. The New Testament is written in the Greek language, so that's the original language. So the word world in this scripture means orderly arrangement. The word for it is cos cosmos. The Bible says, the Bible calls Satan the prince of this world. In some translations, they call him the ruler of this world. Satan has three goals. I'm actually following this one. Satan has three goals. One is to steal. The second goal is to kill. And the final goal is to destroy. And his goal is to do those three things to us, God's creation. This world is Satan's system that fights against everything Jesus Christ is, his ways, and his commands. And if you put all that together, all that leads to to Jesus Christ's kingdom on earth. So as young people, when you don't serve Christ, when you don't serve Jesus Christ, y'all are just following and y'all are just following everything that everyone else is doing, which is following the world, which is following Satan, the prince of this world. And we, were already, and we went over what the word worldly means, which is orderly arrangement. So you guys are following everything that the world is doing, which is led by Satan. And Satan is doing this in an orderly arrangement, meaning everything that he has put out there for y'all, all the sin, all the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, thank you, Pastor. 
is planned behind the scenes just for y'all in an orderly arrangement. So everything that y'all call is y'all call cool or a new style, it is of saying. It's from saying. The one that wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. It's funny because um, I, one thing I've noticed is um, this generation, my generation I've grown up in, they believe that they are living life by their own will, but they are just doing what they are programmed to do by Satan and himself. So you're not really making your own choices when you choose to sin, when you choose not to follow Christ, when you choose to rebel against God and rebel against order, get, rebel against people that are trying to sow into your life and trying to keep you from the wrong path. You are really just doing what Satan wants you to do, what he's programmed you to do. So you're like a robot. You're automatic. As a young person, um, I've, um, I've, I've grown, I've grown to, to, you know, obviously social media has connected us uh, to uh, throughout the world, you know, real easily, real, um, re very real easily. And um, so it's allowed uh, influence, saying to influence more easier. And a lot of my influence growing up, um, when, I, when I was growing up, it came from, you know, uh, rappers and celebrities and whatnot. And it's, it's fine because those, those people, they follow the world and they are led by saying, and these rappers that and celebrities that's that that's that's placed in front of y'all that saying places in front of y'all just are just placed in front of y'all to influence you to sin. When we talk about when we talk about Bible and we talk about God's commandments, we we young people they, they seem to think God's boring. They seem to think that, oh, God is just keeping us from having fun. Um, you know, not to have sex, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we can't do this. We can't do that. We can't, you know, you know, same old, same old. But there are, there's, there's physical side effects of sin, but there is a spiritual side effects of sin, which is really, <laughs> the spiritual realm is more real than our physical, than the physical realm. Everything that happens in the spiritual realm, everything that happens in the physical realm, manifest, starts first in the spiritual realm. So if you're over here following rappers and celebrities that promote fornication, that promote sex, that promote you doing that stuff, yeah, you seen you, you may be having fun, you know, you know, dressing sexy, dressing lust, lustfully, you know, showing your body off. You think that's fun. You think you feel empowered, blah, blah, blah. But you are sowing evil spirits into your life that are now, uh, uh, now, that are now having control of your life because you open a door to sin. You open a door for them to allow them to be in your life. That is the spiritual side effect of sin. When you listen, you know, when, when, young man, when you listen to them rappers talking about murdering people, talking about stealing, killing, doing drugs, y'all understand when you speak those lyrics into existence, you are doing things in the spiritual realm that's going to affect your life. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. There's a reason why God said that. Whenever you're rapping about, you do, let's say we talk about, if you're rapping about murder and killing people and stuff like that, you know, drill music, they call it trap music and drugs. You are speaking death into your life. And if you don't believe me, go look up Tupac and Biggie. The music they put, up, all that death music, look what happened to them. So y'all think that's cool? 
Death ain't cool. Especially when you die without Christ. You know, one thing that I've learned, Pastor, um, in my in my short in my short uh, 19 years of life, I've learned that people love to experience other people's mistakes for themselves. The Bible says, man is like a breath. His days are like a shadow. That's how life, that's how short life is. I had, I had, I played football with someone um, when I was in high school. In 10th grade, I played football. I graduated last year. And um, the boy was 16 years old. And, uh, you know, he was a cool kid, you know, blah, blah. He, you know, he wanted to be cool. You know, he wanted to look cool. Even though I could tell, and I'm pretty sure he knew that um, he wasn't meant for that type of life, but he wanted to be cool. And he wanted to look cool. So, um, you know, he went to a party. This was beginning of January last year. He went to a party. Um, just the year just started, the second week of January. He went to a party about his parents knowing in the middle of the night. And uh, he bumped into, I guess him and his friends bumped into some people they had problems with at the party. And so him and his friends left the party. And uh, they went to a park nearby the party, and those 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 people they bumped into found them and came and did a drive-by. He was, I believe it was three people that that boy was with. That sixteen that sixteen year old boy year old boy was with. One one of them, I think I believe is alive. Uh, the second one died at the hospital, and the 16-year-old boy died at the scene. Sometimes I, I think about it, because um, I actually, I knew him, I didn't know him like that, but I, I was, you know, I played football with him, you know, I just said what's up, I said what's up, you know, but I, I never, I never thought that that would, uh, I would, the next week, it was Friday, saw him on Friday, you know, just walk around the school. And then the next two days later, Monday comes and he, he not there no more. And I, I, I seen pictures of him. You know, he he went to church, but I don't know if he ever gave his life to Christ. Sixteen years old. You're not you're not young to die. You're not too young to die. And he did all that just to look cool. Just to look cool. Young people, it's mind-boggling. You're going to gamble eternity just to look cool? Just to be cool? You know, I saw his friends crying at the school the next the next week and stuff, but in my mind, I said, if y'all was really his friend, y'all would have told him, Stop hanging out with those kids. Stop hanging out with those guys. They're bad influence on you. If you don't have friends, if you say you have friends, young people, and none of them is serving Jesus Christ to the fullest, you don't have no friends. They're just people that help you out sometimes in life, and you help them out, and that's it. There's nothing else beyond that. One last thing I want to go over is, young people, when you follow Jesus Christ, the world is going to hate you. The world is going to hate you. And Jesus Christ warned us himself that the world will hate you. He said in John 15, he says, the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. And it's, it's as a young person, you think that sounds bad. You sound. You think that's. You think that's the problem when you follow Jesus Christ. That sounds like a big problem, but that's not a problem according to God. Because in the next chapter, He says, "In this, in this life, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. So the problem isn't that the world will hate you if you if you serve Jesus Christ. That's not the problem. It's not the, it's not it's not a problem that people are gonna push you away and hate you. That's not the problem because you serve Jesus Christ. But you you may have a problem. Depending on how, depending on these two questions that I'm going to give you, depending on how you answer these two questions, you may have a problem. And these two questions are, do you personally know Jesus Christ? And, the, and this is more important than the first one. And does Jesus Christ personally know you? That's two questions. And that's not just for the youth. That's for everyone. That's for everyone. I pray that the Lord is ministering to you right now. I know this is unorthodox, Pastor. But if you do not know Jesus Christ, young or old and those answers those answers to those two questions were, were no to both of them or either one of them this is a chance to fix that right now this is a chance to fix that right now um, let's ask everyone to bow their heads um, you people that's out there on the internet if you don't know Jesus Christ if you, if, if, if you know that you're called a lot of y'all young people that go to this church, y'all know y'all called. Y'all not here for no reason. And God's been convicting you that God's been always calling you. This is a chance to get that right right now before it's too late. That 16-year-old boy had a chance to do so. I don't know if he ever did. But God's giving you a chance to do so right now through the screen. It don't matter where you at. You don't got to be at church to receive Christ. All you got to do is just say his prayer after me. You say, Jesus Christ, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I have sinned against you. I want to turn away from my past sinful life towards you. I ask that you forgive me for my sins and cleanse me with your blood. I believe you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the grave three days for me. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord and Savior of my life, to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Send your Holy Spirit to help me to help to help me to, to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. I, I pray this prayer by faith. And I believe I am saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Uh, can you guys give God a hand clap of praise? I believe someone got saved. Um, I truly believe that. I just thank God for this opportunity. All glory belongs to God.